Hey, this is Phil Lilly, Lilly's Landing Resort and Marina, Lake Taney Como. I'm going to do one cast today. I'm boated up here by Lookout. Uh, they're one, running one unit of water this morning. It's, um, um, da -da -da -da, it's Wednesday the 5th of August. I'm going to be throwing a hopper today. It's called a Fat Albert. It's a pretty good size hopper. I have heard they're catching fish up here on it. I'm using a pretty heavy rod really for throwing dries. It's a six weight, nine foot, four piece. It's a Temple Fork um, uh, TICRX, which is not made anymore. Um, I've got, uh, mm -hmm, I think I have 12 foot tapered leader down to a 1x and then a 2x to the fly. That's my setup. Came up here yesterday evening. Actually I came up here twice yesterday throwing that riffle fly um, up here and I had uh, I caught one small rainbow and I had one other look um, so it wasn't very good but that was with um, that three and a half units running they're not quite running four now but I'm going to be working the bank down quite a ways um, we'll see how far I get And what I'm looking for, basically, is throw pretty close to the bank. Um, what I think they do, or what kind of triggers a bite a lot of times, is that fly when it lands. So I kind of like to slap it on the water, make some noise, get their attention, at least with the hopper I do. I throw it anywhere from a foot to ten feet from the bank. It just depends on there's there's lots of pockets and and still water along the bank and then it where it meets the current, the seam. I'll throw in one place more than once if it looks good and if I see a fish come up I'm for sure targeting that spot so I'm so I'm casting quite a bit oh there's a rise right up here And that was a good rise because he came up and ate something. So I'm going to try to drift over that spot two or three times. I'm sure he was eating a, a midge or something, but... And it's not necessarily they're seeing hoppers right now. But we've been trying smaller dries and they're not hitting them, so typically they will hit a hopper. I've well, given him a lot of chances to eat something, so he's not, too, not interested in the hopper. This uh, fly is made of foam, so you don't have to treat it with uh, any kind of floatant. 
but you do have to treat the um, the tapered leader down to the fly and especially your fly line needs to be your fly line needs to be clean and and dressed with uh, with floatants There, there's a there's a rise right there, and oh, I missed him. He's still looking for it. Let's see if he has it again. I I jerked it out of his mouth. He's still looking at it. He just hit something else right next to it. He wasn't real big, but I set the hook a little bit too early. He didn't quite have it in his mouth. It's kind of, it's easy to do when you can see the fish come up underneath the fly. You get excited, and as soon as you see him open his mouth to eat it, which I can see all of it, it's like, it's real easy to set the hook too early. I think he's done with that fly. That's a good, that's a good start. Oh, there you go. He came back. Same fish. Actually, it was about 10 feet below where he first hit it. So he was moving around a little bit. Right in his mouth. Good start. Okay. I hate to miss all this water. <laughs> I saw on the uh, Fly Fishing Lake Taney Como page, Facebook page, that they're starting to catch some browns at outlet number two. Quite a few. And they were saying that they felt like the spawn, they were starting to come up early. Um, I'm not sure if that's true. Uh, they, they must be seeing some some browns up there to be catching them. Um, but then when I was out last night fishing, 
a couple browns uh, jumped around my boat and they uh, for whatever reason all right that's a nicer fish for whatever reason browns when they when they come up here for their spawn they do belly flops they jump up in the air and they uh, splash they make they're not taking anything they're just jumping and a couple of them did it last night that's super early we usually don't see that till september this is a real nice rainbow I want to thank the guy who, I can't remember his name, but posted on Facebook that he'd been coming up here and catching them on the Fat Alberts. That's, that's pretty awesome. It's nice to have them on one X tippet. That's a real heavy fish. back in. That's fresh. This is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm casting 10 feet from the bank right now. That fish took it up, took it, he was probably 10 feet off the bank. I mean, these fish might be hitting, they might hit beetles or ants and stuff like that. That's the first time I've tried it with one unit running. Oh, I missed him. That didn't look like, um, yeah, he's not a bad fish. Ooh, another big rise above me. That's a real pretty rainbow. He's not as not as big, but man, he's golden color. Really pretty. 
the first two fish took it really deep and that one flipped camera 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 I know the GoPro is not going to pick up those takes but I'm trying to keep fishing trying to put my fly out in front where the camera might be able to see see the tank oh my gosh that was a big fish He was big. Let's see if he takes it again. Okay, that hopper. I think that hopper landed upside down that time. Okay, I gotta check. That was a big fish. Check and see if everything is okay. Okay. Go ahead and hit him again. I saw something fall out of this tree and land in the water, it was not a bug or anything, but I thought, boy, well, that, that should trigger something. And that fish came up right after that. It's almost like you almost have two rods rigged with two dry, dry flies, one a hopper and then maybe one smaller. And you get a fish like this, and he missed and you missed the first time he takes it. Then you could throw something different at him. Because obviously he didn't come up and take it. He just came up and boiled on it. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go on. But that was a big, big boil. That was a big fish. Put it right up by that tree, see if anything's been falling out of that bush into the water. That's a great place. I've never really given these <clears throat> these dries much action as far as making them look alive or anything. I just I don't think it's really necessary.
The yeah, nice thing about throwing these hoppers is you don't have to false cast and dry them off. Seems like the best spots though are where the current where the current's moving right along the bank. I've seen a little, I don't know if those are caddis or what, but I've seen some, some bugs come off the water that almost look like caddis. Number one, it's way too, I think it's late for caddis. Plus we don't see them on this lake very much. So I'm throwing close to the bank and then I'll throw out from the bank, close to the bank. Back in these pockets, try to throw back in there. Around these logs like this, sometimes, especially a brown will sit around these logs. I just missed one. I mean, I missed him. I just glanced away. I was looking at that tree, that log up there. Just a little late. He came up and ate it though. If they get a feel, ooh, oh, 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 he came up and made something right next to the fopper. Ah, that was cool. Let's see, one more time. See if he'll, see if he'll eat it. It's not a big fish. Assuming it's the same fish. Last chance, buddy. These little pockets back here. Still a little bit of current back here in the back of this pocket. I really think key, current's the key because they can sit in one place and let stuff come to them.
Yeah. I've caught um, caught three, had missed maybe two or three more. Really? On a hopper. Going to the hopper? Yeah. Yeah. I mean they're pretty active. So just get the hopper up and let it go. Just kind of work the bank, just keep hitting spots. I'm not that good with the fly rod. Oh, that's this is a good way to learn right here. It's a lot of fun. Love coming up and seeing them eat it. Yeah, well that's what he was trying up there. They, just, they weren't having it up there. Yeah, they are here. Yeah. See this, this, have a little run right here where the current is moving all the way up to the bank. There's no pockets or no eddies or anything. And these are my favorite spots. Especially around these trees right here. Try to run that fly through there a couple times. Come on, there's got to be a fish up there. That is way too good. Get a little closer to the bank. That one's within a couple feet of the of the rocks. They'll be they'll ooh, there's a rise down here in this little eddy. It wasn't a very big fish though. I'll throw it to him here in a second. It's hard to throw in an eddy where there's a lot of current. The current will pull your line out, or it pulls the fly out. So there's a technique that, that you can use where you throw, oh man, I'm about through the tree. You actually throw your line, or your, mm, kind of hard to explain. You throw, I'm not doing it now, sorry. You throw kind of past your target and then you give it a little bit of a jerk and it puts slack in your leader. There's a lot of spots here to hit. It puts some slack in that leader closer to your fly and allows that line to be, it doesn't pull your fly immediately out. You've got a little bit of time there where it pulls the slack before it gets to the fly. It's a little hard to explain. It's easier to show somebody. Oh, this is a good spot. Throw up underneath that branch that's hanging over the water. Come on.
great looking water right here. The water is pretty deep. It, I mean, it drops off from the bank really quick. So you could have a big fish sitting a foot off those rocks. Picking up stuff that falls in the water. I like this spot because I can throw up underneath this tree. You have a lot of things potentially falling out of that tree. That for the trout to eat. Just like that. <laughs> Uh, it's like that moth that just came out of the tree, just about fell in the water. A little dry spell here. See if there's one right there in that pocket. Well, I'm getting there. I like the area. There's a, a, I've caught some nice fish down here closer to the narrows. I want to get down there. He just missed it. I didn't miss him. Maybe he'll take it again.
turkey. The water along this bank is pretty dead. It's pretty still, but that's where that fish was. Before I get too much further, I'm going to go ahead and uh, inspect my hopper, see if it's still looking pretty good. Sometimes, especially the fly like this, the line will catch the hook and turn it around and there's no way you're going to hook a fish that that happens. So I'm going to look at it real quick. It looks good. Go ahead and put some floating on it. There's my floating jack. Here it is. We'll make that stay fluffy on the back a little longer hit the leader a little bit oh yeah that's floating a lot better now So I think I missed three and caught three. Maybe four. Maybe missed four. I don't remember. Come on. It's a good spot. Good spot. Get these pockets back in this eddy. Come on. That looks so good.
this looks it's like a fish just needs to come up and eat this come on I can shoot it up in there. You would think. I've had more action this morning than I have ever. To this year at least. Oh, come on. Big fish just rose behind me. Uh. It's a good spot. Good fish. Good spot, good fish. That is so cool to be up here. I wish the camera could pick it up to see that fish come off the bottom, come up and eat that thing. There's a big pile of pond moss right there, pond moss, pond weed. I think he came out from under, from the side of it. Not as big as that second one that caught. Come on, I'm missing a lot of good bank here. <laughs> uh. All you're going to see. Okay. Four. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna hold the boat here for a second. I'm gonna put a little more floating on this. I said before you don't have to put floating on these, but I was wrong. There's a lot of um, fluffy stuff on the back that you put some floating on that, it really makes it ride high. And rub a little, a little bit on the tippet. So one time I didn't move the camera. Well, I'm probably gonna just edit all that out because I didn't do anything any different. And I didn't see anything and I didn't get any blow ups or any takes. And uh, sorry about that. I really have been trying to to move that camera back every time I move it down. But I get distracted. Now I came down through there, and it's, it's one of my favorite stretches. Because um, the water moves fast all the way to the bank, uh, about a 150 yard stretch. And uh, it's a great stretch, I've caught some I actually caught some nice browns through that stretch, but I didn't get anything at all, so really didn't miss anything. Uh-oh. About cut a log. So, I'm going to edit that out probably about 10 minutes or so. Make the video a little shorter. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I think Almost every fly fisherman loves to catch fish on a dry, which this is basically a dry. Um, we, uh, one thing I did say is we usually don't really start catching these fish um, on a hopper. I mean, sometimes we'll catch them in July, but mainly it's, a, it's an August, September, October thing, so the fact that they're already starting to come up and, and eat them that good in um, the very first of August is pretty awesome. So hopefully it's a sign of things to come. It's pretty cool. Thanks for watching. We will do it again tomorrow.